Hi there folks, welcome to the Willis Jim Show. Kind of a controversial title for today's video, but it's gonna really tie in here. And if you're just joining us, I hope you'll take the time to go back and look at the other videos so you'll see where I'm coming from on all this. But what you see on me here is a proof of the theory. I'm gonna take you through some um, of the techniques I've been using to get this grease off of people and off of me using heat. You see I have a device on, I call this, because I'm so hip, I call it my e -stole. Um This is actually just a heat pad that is a collar, and if you suffer from migraines, if you suffer from um, uh, stress and sore throats and all kinds of issues that I've been talking about with these clogged drains, this device is gonna help you immensely. But you don't really wanna use this without another heat pad. And the reason why is you're always going to, whenever you do any draining from the extremities, you're always going to want to provide some heat at the core. And that's the most important thing about using heat is to always drain it to the core and don't go crazy. One of the worst things you can do, get some drains open, melt a bunch of grease, relocate it, and then get it cold, have it congeal, and create a slab that pokes you someplace else. You can cause a lot more problems. This heat technique is a bit of an advanced technique. You should be doing something active. And here's the other thing. Don't do this. Don't use heat if you're just going to keep, if you got a bag of chips right there and you're going to just have another glass of soda or whatever, don't do this. You're going to set yourself up for so much pain. You can't keep putting in. This is about getting it out. And again, this is part of a long-term program so many other parts to it but I got to get it up little by little and so that's the deal I hope you'll do this and be very careful but this is going to be of such a huge help if you do and it's so easy you're going to heat the core and you're going to heat the core here you might put the pad behind you you can do this up on the bolster pillow and get things bouncing down below the heat pad can be put on your feet can be put on your ankles you can put it on your calves if you've got some problems in the knee, especially in this area here, just hold the heat pad here for a little bit and beat it around. Always thinking in terms of establishing a flow and returning it to the core. And it really is that simple. Most of the women who come to my gym end up with about five of these pads. And here's the other thing. If you train a muscle group with resistance training, and you add heat to it and draining technique afterwards, you'll eliminate muscle soreness hugely because it's about keeping this saturated fat solvent so that you can burn it. If you stay active, stay warm, and don't let yourself chill and let these drains clog up, you're going to be all on your way to being healthy and staying healthy. And if you look at tribal people the world over, you'll see that they've got some wonderful adaptations and the ancestral populations of Africa especially have some amazing behaviors and physical adaptations for keeping this lymph flowing in the skin sheath and keeping this grease solvent because it's about supplemental saturated fat. These are vegetarian populations who are being forced to exploit new niches and are developing, changing, and adapting to consuming some saturated fat. And with the heat being so effective at getting some of these drains open, I'm sure you can appreciate how some dark skin and its radiant heat ability and, 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 and properties in the sun of Africa could do a lot for keeping this skin sheath warm. And if you look at colors, actually, the black color, like if you look at the temperatures of, of car interiors on an average sunny day, a black car, dark black, can actually get up to about 115, where a red car will be in the 90s, about 93. And that is a good idea, a, a good proof of how I think the black skin is a much more recent adaptation, and that has to deal with refined carbohydrate, and I'll deal with that later. 
but appreciate this reddish brown skin that you see in these ancestral populations for what it does to move lymph in the sun. And you'll see the Wodabi herders um, in Burkina Faso area, they actually, the men paint their blacker skin a red paint. And you find that red paint on Native American tribes in the Northeast who are lighter skinned, but they go red to get that lymph flow amongst those groups who were eating the saturated fat there. And that ancestral population can be tied to that whole East Coast, South Africa line. These were the seafaring groups. Most likely that group was experimenting with aquatic mammal fat and the San Kung lines were going inland and they were the first ones to really start adapting to eating the mammalian fat from the land animals. Although, albeit they didn't quite adapt as well because they obviously had some serious issues. That whole trance, half death thing, high infant mortality, mothers dying, childbirth, that's a marginalized area, not the best place. That's survival, although they obviously had a lot of fun up until really recently. Um, but you look at the ones that adapted so amazingly to this saturated fat, and you'll see a couple of other um, morphological changes, and that's in that Asian face. You see in like the Zulu and the Zosa women, and it's all the way over to Polynesia and on beyond, that these features in Africa with that reddish brown skin, the epicanthus fold, no brow ridge, smooth drop to the lymph, the wider flat nose, smooth, the big wide lips darker because they fill with lymph and become bulb like pumps. And being darker, they heat up and create a little enhanced flow, which gets rid of the need for the jutting chin. You see the larger ears on these populations to en enhance the oxygenation that's reduced uh, flow in, in the nose. And you see these beautiful smooth faces. You can appreciate how amazingly well adapted the color of the skin and the facial features are to dealing with this lymph flow. And that's why that group was just so successful all the way up. And I want to close with just one thought along these lines because I see these, these shooters, these white boys in America, these shooters with the guns killing everybody and they show pictures of them. And I see these lines of white supremacists and these angry men. And to a man, they're overweight obese, some morbidly so, and all of these angry kids with the pimples in the drains and puffy face and every single thing is clogged with grease because they don't go outside. They, they just eat this saturated fat and, and glucose and it's clogging all of their drains and it's making them mentally ill. And it, it just can't be lost on you that the theory just literally screams out. It's so insane that these people are, are, are white supremacists and white superiority. When, when, I mean, to me, it's obvious these boys would be so, it, it would be so wonderful for them if they just had some, I mean, for this diet anyway, if they had some brown skin and perhaps some mothers who told them to put down the damn video games and go out in the sun and play, maybe they wouldn't be so uptight. Because I got to tell you, um, that right there makes for a very happy human. Just go to Mother Africa and <laughs> see for yourself. So, thanks for watching. I'll be back.